It's great to be here today. Thank you very much. I am John Sustersick. I am um, with the Autonomy, Perception, and Cognition Department at the Applied Research Laboratory here at Penn State. And it's great to be here today to talk with you and see some kids um, um, to, to kind of talk about what, what my team is doing in this, this kind of interesting field of autonomy and kind of what it all means for us as a society. Because, you know, more <laughs> than anything, um, what does it, you know, as we just heard, what does it, what it really distinguishes this time from other times in our in history is, is the, our use of technology and the pervasive use of technology and how rapidly that technology is evolving how we live. Um, and, you know, there's many aspects to that and, and you know, there's, you know, implications for those aspects as well. So, um, what we do in our lab, we work on um, developing what we call cognitively advanced autonomy. So autonomy that's kind of of the nature that we're growing to expect. We believe that having a diverse group of students working with full-time engineers and um, really transdisciplinary research, people from the cognitive scientists and the Rock Ethics Institute, and as well as the engineers and scientists and, and mathematicians working together is a necessary way uh, hopefully sufficient, but we'll see about that, of addressing these problems to come up with a good solution. All of us grew up, like I did, <laughs> watching movies um, that inspired us to what the future held. You know, in, uh, how many of you recognize all of these guys? I mean, <laughs> of course, yeah. Um, some of them are older, maybe older than I care to admit, um, but it's interesting because we have this high bar, high standard for what we expect from our autonomy, right? Data is, you know, kind of the, the ultimate example. Someone who doesn't have the emotions, but who, you know, otherwise looks and talks with us. We can trust him because he makes decisions that we understand. Um, and then the whole, you know, the whole Star Trek, you know, uh, continuous uh, questioning of whether or not emotions are a good thing or a bad thing is something that we actually address in our research, not understanding completely what it means to have a, like a, a completely unfeeling, um, uh, unemotional machine um, trust, to trust is in, our, um, in our work and our daily activities. The reality is, <laughs> so these are real robots that exist today. Um, we're not quite there yet. So the robots are coming, and they are changing things, but not necessarily in the ways that science fiction and television and um, Hollywood has, has led us to believe. So on the top, there is a, um, a robot that's currently in development at Virginia Tech. It is um, designed to fight fires on Navy ships. Well, that sounds pretty cool. It's pretty dangerous for people to go there. Um, it doesn't walk on its own very well. It has a lot of computing power connected to a cable right now to make it work. So we're still struggling through many of the challenges to enable that um, to just hop on the ship like we would imagine C3PO or Data to go off and do some cool work for us. Um, on the bottom left is a Roomba, which I'm sure, some, anyone have a Roomba at home? Okay, great. <laughs> so I wouldn't exactly call it the most advanced piece of technology. And I actually don't know what happens if it finds a dog's tail or a cat's tail and how well it responds to that. Um, so we're starting simple with our, with our technologies. Of course, um, uh, NASA has done some great um, instances of robotics in interstellar applications. And, and then we have the Predator up on top, or actually the Reaper drone, uh, where we have a lot of technology to go put a capability, whether it's the sensors or other um, things in, um, in harm's way. Um, we actually have drones as well. You can go to Best Buy today uh, if you want. I'm not advertising, by the way. I don't get kickbacks. Um, uh, but you can go buy a drone, and you have a camera on those things. Uh, Google self-driving car. Um, Tesla has a self-driving car. Increasingly, we're having advanced automation in our, in our cars today, um, which ideally, and maybe in some, per in some worlds, we have completely self-driving cars on the highways everywhere. What do you think about that? That's a question, right? As a society, we should be asking ourselves, do we really want to have self-driving cars? Would that be better? What does it even mean to be better? It depends on who you ask and how you ask the question, I think. What's interesting about all these things is that um, they're wisely connected to the internet, which is good and bad, and they are um, with, uh, have tremendous capabilities and tremendous power, but then they can also be used for ways that may, we may or may not have intended. Um, it's, it's reminiscent of the, um, 
the adage that I think Winston Churchill uttered, amongst others, who said that with great power comes great responsibility. We have um, you know, something of an obligation in using these tools in, in productive ways. Um, one of the really interesting things about uh, what's happening is this is from an article just published by um, MIT Technology Review that it kind of warns that for the really state of the art in, in um, artificial intelligence, even the experts who build these things don't completely know how they work or what they do. And, and that's a potentially real problem. I mean, I'm sure I, didn't, I, ch I chose not to put the picture of the Terminator from Hollywood fame. Um, that's kind of our doomsday scenario. Um, but in some sense, when we start developing technology where we don't understand how it's going to, uh, where it's going to go is a, a potential step in that direction. So the work I do in my lab is um, focused on how do we get this cognitively advanced autonomy um, and make it so that it's trustable by humans. And we started this in kind of a different way from a lot of robotics research. We went and talked to, to real people who do things in the real world as teams, operating uh, you know, independently from others, and we asked them how they got around the world. Uh, we were talking about you know, in the military domain, so I can't get into all the details. Oh, I didn't mean that for there to be <laughs> audio there, apologize. But you can see some of the video of our system working. Um, and that will not say good. Um, we asked the, uh, we asked these um, humans how they decide what they do, and we learned a lot of things. One of the things we learned there's a lot of value to how the human teams work, because we, as, as a society, we often think that technology is perfect, and that somehow a computer-based solution to a problem will give us a better answer than a human solution would be. That's not completely true. The, the computer solution will give us the precise answer to the question we ask it, <laughs> based on what the algorithm is designed to do. And if we ask the right question, that'll be extremely useful. <laughs> but if we don't ask the right question, or if we're asking it to do things that we don't completely understand, then the answer we get might not be correct. Um, human systems make mistakes all the time. Right? I made some today in my presentation. I had the volume up on my video. Um, and, and um, um, despite all these imperfections, our human systems tend to be very stable. And so from a scientific point of view, that's a very interesting question to us, one that we were trying to understand better. Um, it's kind of hard to read, so I apologize for this, but what you're seeing is a real run from the little submarine that you saw in the noisy video. Uh, it is an un unmanned underwater vehicle. There it's back, coming back to the surface. Um, that is authentic wind noise, <laughs> not computer generated. Um, and what we did was we, we run this autonomously using these top-down constraints. And we are integrating along with these top-down constraints that are human understandable, um, the bottom-up super smart AI technologies that you keep reading about in all the technologies. And the intention is that by bounding it in the top-down in ways that are acceptable to human teams to do similar jobs, that we will yield a, a, an autonomous system that it can grow and develop and learn in a way that is um, acceptable to the people who will be working with these systems. And uh, throughout the video, you, you may have saw these little pop-up dialogues that had our agents talking to each other. So our, the, they, we, we break down the command of our autonomous systems like the, the, the human teams work, and they talk to each other in natural language so that you can actually have mixed autonomous um, systems working with man systems, and they would interact in ways that a, a, a human would recognize and understand well. We add some explanation capability into um, the agents so that, um, that that warning that we saw a couple slides back, that we don't completely understand why the systems are doing what they do won't necessarily apply um, to the work that we're doing. So what uh, I'd like to leave you is with this. Um, all these great technologies, whether it's the quad, quad, quad rotor that you might run out and get from Best Buy later today, or whether it's a self-driving car that you might have in your future, these are extremely good tools. But like any powerful tool, we have to understand how to use them and how to use them safely. We, uh, we, if we don't have that understanding, then we can cause unintended, unintended consequences to ourselves and to others as the tools become more powerful. Um, so I would caution you in that. Um, and this is, <laughs> this is hard for the experts, for, 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 for many folks who 
enjoy using their smartphones and their tablets and their laptops and come to depend on them. We trust to the experts to make sure that the tools they give us are reasonably safe and, and well designed. Um, but that still doesn't pr completely keep us safe from all the possible consequences there exist in their use. So um, it's kind of like um, the warning I give to my computer science students when I teach them. So that in, in our business, um, we have to accept that we're going to have to keep learning as much as we can, as fast as possible, and, and be happy with the fact that we're constantly falling behind the state of the art. We're never going to be able to keep up, but we still have to continue to learn and try to keep up to the best of our abilities to make the best of the tools that we have with us. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>